Now, three states have introduced bans on single-use plastic, which will come into effect this month. The bans will look different state to state, with everything from takeaway containers to coffee cups being forbidden. All three states have banned the sale of cotton buds with plastic stems. South Australia has scrapped single-use plastic plates and bowls. How am I going to have a picnic in South Australia? And Queensland has banned lighter-than-air balloons, whatever they are. Nick, the truth is the bulk of the plastic in our oceans comes from five Asian countries, China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand and Vietnam. Yet we've got... Western countries, not just our, us, uh, banning straws and plastic stem co cotton buds. Why? Well, it's infuriating, Rita. I mean, I, I was at my local <laughs> shop recently and it was tipping with rain outside and all they had was a paper bag. And so what happened was all my groceries promptly fell all over the pavement. It, it's just not practical. It, it's, it's driven by some weird sort of <laughs> almost quasi-religious obsession which sees plastic as evil, whereas in course plastic, plastic mm. is, is responsible for saving many people's lives, for making our food that much healthier. Oh, that there was more plastic too. It's a perfect thing for preserving food. And when it goes in landfill, of course, it's a tiny, tiny amount of landfill, you know, single-use plastic bag. Uh, hardly takes up any space at all. The problem is here, of course, is always just getting people to do the right thing, put their litter in the bin. And Australians do do that, by the way. I mean, you go to other countries and they're not yes. so, as, so good at that. Oh, well, look, I think plastic pollution in the oceans is a huge issue. This is something I'm actually mm. passionate about. But the level of ignorance around it is astounding. You know, Australians yeah. don't go and dump their rubbish in waterways. There are countries where that is a routine practice, and that's part of the reason why we have this enormous problem. Banning straws, plastic straws, isn't going to solve the problem of plastic in our oceans. Now, let's go to mm. Qantas. The new CEO is facing calls to restore the airline's reputation by treating campaigners on both sides of the voice debate Equally, former Deputy PM John Anderson has pointed to the airline's decision to reward yes campaigners with free flights and called for the same treatment to extend to no campaigners. And they needed a lot more, Nick. They, they don't have the cash of the yes campaign. Yeah, look, I, I knew they were doing this, Rita, but, and John Anderson pointed out in this morning's paper I, uh, that at this time, I just was infuriated by it. I mean, here they are putting up fares, you know, blocking Qatar Airways from coming in so that fares stay high. And, uh, you know, I mean, if, if somebody who's had to pay for a few domestic flights recently, they are very expensive. And on top of this now, they're mm. using, I guess, what would go to profits or to help, you know, pay for cheaper tickets for us to give it away to the Yes campaigners. I, I really think the best thing they could do is democratise the airline right away, close the chairman's lounge, you know, make that a monument to Alan Joyce, close it like Storm the Bastille and, and just get everybody just travelling on an equal basis and paying a fair fare for their journey. Well, you know what? I think this call should be extended to all those other big corporates, you know, the big miners, Rio Tinto, BHP, the big banks all of the ones who've signed these massive checks to the Yes campaign, because we do not have an even playing field here. We've got one campaign that's got about a $100 million war chest and the other one that can't afford to buy ad space in, in the major markets and is concentrating in, in South, on South Australia and Tasmania. So uh, mm. perhaps, yeah, mm. perhaps there should be a little bit of consumer pressure to have a bit of fairness in this debate. Very, and on very Qantas, good idea. It's been reported... Uh, their frequent flyer program, which I'm sure you're a member of, well, the value of those points has plummeted uh, with frequent flyers having to use up to five times as many points plus cash to redeem a reward as they used to be. Uh, the Daily Telly reports that uh, Qantas frequent flyer points are now so devalued that the same number of points that once would have flown you first class, first class to London return will now only get you a one-way economy fare to Beirut. <laughs> My goodness, so this hasn't <laughs> happened overnight. We're not, uh, this is uh, something that has uh, taken quite a few years, but that is disturbing. Uh, one-way <laughs> economy fare to Beirut compared to first-class return fares to London. 
I don't know when you last tried to use points on Qantas, but I, I've given up. Like I've got the points sitting there, but you can never get the fair at, at anything like a reasonable number of points. Mm. You know, it's just ludicrous. Whereas I'm, I'm, I put a word in for Virgin. I mean, I flew up here on on points for Virgin today up to Queensland and lovely journey apart from the welcome to country at the end but you know I mean you, you, there there are alternatives that's the point and let's give a big shout out to Rex Airlines that's the, the the airline where you can land in Melbourne without being reminded that you're an evil oppressor of, of Aboriginal people <laughs> well, I will welcome uh, any changes from the new Qantas CEO, including ditching the completely unnecessary and repetitive acknowledgement of countries. Nikita, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thanks, Rita.